gathering to welcome the newly elected class of 2019. You have Genny Kafelnikov, not present, but Lee Na was, and so was a woman who lifted a Grand Slam singles trophy twice, including here in Melbourne in 95. Of course, that is Mary Pierce, and we are very pleased to welcome Mary to TC Live. Great to see you. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thanks. How are you? I'm great. Uh, congratulations on the election to join Martina and her colleagues in the most the exclusive club. club in tennis. Uh, tell us how you heard the Thank news and you. what your reaction was. It's such an honor. Um, Geez, just to be sitting here next to Martina and think that I'm also Stop Hall of it. Famer. It. <laughs> it's very humbling, I do have to say. Um, but yes, I do remember when I heard the news because, well, first, when I was nominated again this yeah. time. So it was the third time that I was nominated. So I was like, okay. Then I saw Lee Na and I was like, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's no not chance. limited to All one. China's going to vote for her. So there, there that goes. Um, but no, I was very happy when I got the call. Uh, Stan Smith called me and... Uh, you know, it's very difficult to put into words, but you're just so happy and so proud and so grateful. And it's just amazing to feel that your whole career is being recognized, everything that you've done. Um, it just means so much to me. So this was a case of third time was a charm yes. for you. <laughs> so take us back to 1995. You had a great year, 94. You come here as a 20-year-old, high hopes, but still, this is a major. And then you end yeah. up winning, uh, beating Conchita Martinez, who was ranked number one in the world, and, and Arantxa number two, semifinals and finals. What did that feel like? Well, it felt amazing because uh, <laughs> that's for sure. I mean, winning your first Grand Slam title is such a, a special feeling. It's. Do you still have the kangaroo? Or it yeah, I still have the kangaroo. Okay, good. <laughs> and and I trophy. actually thought that I was taking that trophy home with me when yeah, I was no. walking down the stairs. They started taking it away from me. I was like, wait a minute. No, I won this. <laughs> no, we're going to give you a smaller one to go home. And I was like, so disappointed. And I was like, but wait. And I didn't have a really good look at it. So the next time I won a Grand Slam at the French, I was like, I made sure that I really held it and looked at it and read it and kissed it you know, and hugged it. <laughs> but yeah, it was uh, it was very special to win my first Grand Slam here for sure. And the second one was five years later, and I can't imagine how special that must have been as a French woman to win Roland Garros. Talk about what that fortnight felt like, and then just what the aftermath must have been like for you. Well, it was a very special tournament uh, for me. It was always my dream to one day play Roland Garros, my dream to hopefully win it one day. It was so, so difficult, and just that moment right there when I won it was just incredible. It was like my dream came true in tennis, and there's my mom uh, cheering for me. It was just such a such an incredible moment of my life. Everything that I've worked so hard for for so many years, you know, all, all the difficult times, all the struggling, all the pain, the injuries, the the sacrifices, everything that you've given up for that moment and your dream come true. It's just like all the emotions that you could probably feel in one moment. And how nuts did the French media go in the <laughs> days and weeks after that? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it's always been very special to play the French Open for me, playing in my uh, front of my home crowd. The crowd has always been amazing, cheering for me, and, and that's always a plus when you play there. Um, but it was just, you know, when you win, you feel like the whole country is won, and so the whole country is celebrating, and uh, it's just really special. So for me, not necessarily the best players were the toughest players for me. Some lower ranked players gave me fits. Who, who was your toughest opponent? Yeah, you're right, years? Martina. <laughs> That's a good question. Well, I'll tell you, two of my toughest opponents were Amy Fraser there you go, uh -huh. and Kimberly Poe. There you go. And wow. they were just like walls. I mean, they would get everything mm -hmm. back no matter how hard I hit the ball. It just seemed like it didn't affect them and they never miss. And it was hard to hit a winner pass. And I was like, oh, no, how do I beat them? <laughs> So. And so conversely, was there a great player that a lot of other players had trouble with that you matched up well against? Um, well, Go ahead. <laughs> I feel like I, I enjoyed playing against players that um, gave me more time and had more top spin on the ball. So mm -hmm. players like Arancha, mm -hmm. players like Conchita, um, those kind of games, uh, I feel like, gave me more time to set up my shot and um, go for it and be able to hit the ball hard. I, I want to ask Mar uh, Martina a question about you. W w when you watched Mary play and you commentated on her matches, what did you think about her game? Because she was kind of the dawn of the massive power era, part of the dawn of the, the massive power yeah. era in women's tennis. Monica Sellers was the first really big hitter from both sides, but then Mary took it to another level because she had a bigger size, bigger serve, and, and moved really well. I, 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 I had a hard time playing Mary because it was hard to find an opening. So, yeah, uh, I'm, congratulations <laughs> for being the Hall of Fame. You gave me thank fits. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I remember our matches, yeah. Well, what do you remember about your matches? Mm. Well, I remember, well, first of all, watching Martina and I was just so in awe. I remember meeting Martina, I think it was 
14 or 15 years old and I was arriving at Hilton Head Hilton for the Head. first time that. playing my first big tournament and here comes Martina on her bike and she comes and says hi to me and I was like oh my gosh Martina Navratilova said hi to me. Yeah, she's very standoffish. You know? She's I very still, friendly. I still you know? say hi to you and I'm still yeah. on a bike. Uh, I'm riding a bike here. <laughs> Go figure anyway. Um, 2006 is a, you, you mentioned the struggles mm. that was the year that uh, you suffered the ACL tear and I know you tried very hard to come back you rehabbed very hard to come back and ultimately you were not able it's funny we're uh, not funny at all but uh, we're watching Andy Murray go through mm. a situation where he's trying to decide if he can come back if he wants to have surgery how long did it take you to sort of come to peace with with how that happened and how your career ended well that's a good question because I had my surgery and when I woke up I had a you know ACL meniscus cartilage bone bruising so it was really bad injury when I woke up my surgeon told me that things went really well and that I'll be back on the court in four to six months and he's done many, many athletes who are great champions and they've come back and accomplished many things after their surgery. So I thought, great, I'll be back soon. Six months later, I still couldn't do a full leg extension. Mm. So it was already a mystery for everybody what was happening with my knee. No one could really understand. And after two years of doing rehab and trying to come back, I still had pain. I still wasn't able to do things. So it just seemed like it was a bit of a mystery to everyone that I went to around the world to try to get my knee fixed so I could play again. So I figured, you know what? Everything happens in life for a reason, and I know that it's always for the best. And there were also other things that I had in my life that were actually more important than tennis and that I had always wanted to do that I didn't have time to do because I was always traveling on the tour. And I thought, okay, well, let me just go and do something different, take a break from rehab, and then just see how things go. And maybe one day my knee won't hurt anymore, and if it does, I'll see if I want to go back and train to come back and play. Are you pain-free now? So now I am pain-free. <laughs> okay, that's great. And so as you walk yes. up to the stage for your Hall of Fame induction, you will be pain-free. Exactly. Uh, Mary, on behalf of all of us at Tennis Channel, congratulations. Thank you. We can't you. wait to be with you in Newport this summer. Thank you. Me too. Thank all you right. so much. Thanks, Martina. Soon-to-be <laughs> Hall of Famer Mary Pierce joining us. That moment etched forever in French tennis history and I imagine in her memory banks.